Can we recycle engine heat more efficiently? Hello and thank you for your time. I am John Kubik and I would like to start by saying thank you to the internal power engine. It has been the mainstay of our growth in transportation and many other operations for over 100 years. Unfortunately, it has limitations from the large amount of energy wasted and given off as heat. The barely known Nelson engine has a method to recycle much of this heat, potentially, Raising, potentially raising the efficiency of an engine to 60%. I met Dr. Nelson in 1974 when he described the engine he had invented as a roller drive regenerative engine. I would like to describe the Nelson engine for you, how it works, why the efficiency is so much higher, and why the exhaust contains no poisonous gases. This engine is completely cylindrical. An engine large enough to power an automobile would not be much bigger than a Quaker Oats box. The first working model was only 19 inches long. One person could easily pick it up by hand. There is only one major moving part combining the air compression piston, the shaft, and the, and the power piston in one piece. All of these are hollow with cooling air moving through them. The power piston is inside the combustion cylinder surrounded by a hollow air chamber. A cylinder head is at each end of the cylinder shaped kind of like a flattened metal bagel with a hole in the center for the power, sh for the power shaft. F fuel injectors and spark plugs are at each end of the cylinder. The easiest way to understand how the engine works is to know how air, fuel, and exhaust move through the system. Let's start with the piston to the right, with air, fuel, and a spark beginning combustion in that side of the cylinder. This power explosion forces the whole piston assembly to the left, and fresh air is pulled into the right side of the air chamber. At the same time, the air in the left side of the chamber is compressed and forced through the air piston, the hollow shaft, the power piston, and then through the air chamber surrounding the cylinder walls. As the flame dies out and the piston is moved as far to the left as it can, the clean, pressurized air comes into the chamber, into the, the cylinder, and forces the exhaust air out of the engine. Now the same things were happening on the other side of the cylinder just before this. As the piston reaches the far left, there is already fresh, heated, compressed air plus injected fuel in that chamber, and when the spark ignites on this side, the whole sequence happens again, just in the opposite direction. Most of our automobiles and trucks use what is called a four-stroke engine. The description comes because out of every four movements of the piston, only one is during a power stroke. The Nelson engine has a complete power cycle every time it moves, whether to the right or to the left, so it is called a one-stroke engine. The whole point of this is the idea of increasing efficiency. In our current engines, some minor improvements are possible from items like turbos and heat exchangers, yet the laws of physics simply forbid that the four-stroke engine can ever get much better than 15 or 20 percent efficiency. The diesel engine gets closer to 30 percent since it has a much higher compression ratio, yet that higher compression demands a stronger, therefore heavier engine, causing a trade-off with miles per gallon. The Nelson engine achieves 60 percent efficiency for three primary reasons. The one stroke's advantage, recycling of heat, and fewer moving parts. The lighter weight also helps to improve. And why the exhaust contains no poisonous gases. Current engines, including the rotary, the diesel, the four-stroke, and the two-stroke engines, all create two types of noxious poisonous gases for one simple reason. The fuel and air mixture is burned incorrectly with some of it not burning hot enough and part of it not burning or and part of it burning too hot. The ideal temperature range for complete power is 2000 degrees to 3200 degrees. Unfortunately, energy is wasted from heating the incoming air up to that 2000 degree range and some of that air never gets hot enough. The cylinder walls are usually cooled by water or air and the pistons are cooled by the motor oil below them. They must be used these must be used to cool the current engines so that the metals don't melt. The cylinder wall is cooled to somewhere close to boiling 
and a microscopic layer of air next to that wall never heats much above 500 degrees. That incompletely burned fuel air mixture creates carbon monoxide and particularly these products can create physical effects on our health, possibly including asthma. Since the conventional engine's walls are too cool in order to try to balance the burn rate, the flame in the center of the chamber gets too hot. This temperature goes as high as 5,500 degrees and therefore overburns the mixture. The overburning forces the nitrogen from the air to get mixed in also. This forms nitrous oxides, which are claimed to cause acid rain and smog. Now, going back to our diagram of the Nelson engine, we see the air passing through the inside of the piston shaft and the power piston. As it moves through, it pulls heat from them, then moves into the surrounding chamber and pulls more heat from the cylinder walls. However, instead of throwing away the heat, like an engine's radiator does, that warmed air is immediately recycled into the power chamber. Since it is already hot and compressed, it is close to that minimum 2000 degrees before the explosion even starts. This power flame has an easier, more efficient job to do. Since it does not have to heat the air or compress the mixture, it does not need to burn either as hot or as fast. It burns more completely and stays under that upper range of 3200 degrees. Wasted heat is tremendously reduced. The only two exhaust gases are water and carbon dioxide. And the really, starting part of this, the really exciting part of this is that only one-fourth as much carbon dioxide is produced for the amount of power generated. Down here is a, the range of Fahrenheit burning temperatures. 500 is too cold. Ideal range 2000 to 3200. And up to 5500 is too hot. What that 60% efficiency really means is that while driving your car from New York to Florida, by substituting a Nelson engine you will only use one-fourth of the gasoline that your current car would use. A farmer's tractors will use only a fraction of the fuel they currently use, while the exhaust will be only what their plants sweat water and CO2. The trucker bringing your grapes to you from California or bringing your pecans to you from Georgia will use less than half of the diesel fuel he used before, lowering your prices. But you'll notice a difference even before he gets to the store, since all you will see from that truck on the interstate is clean air. The original patents have expired on this invention, since the first patent was, in, was issued in 1971. However, there are development patents available which will grant another 20 plus years of protection. For information on further development of this engine and patentable new improvements, please contact www.nelsonengine.com. Thank you very much for your time.